You can pause the video and read the question carefully. In this question, you are asked to formulate the linear program to maximize the earning. Also, prepare the initial basic feasible solution table for the simplex iteration. Data are given here. The organization is providing three types of services, service A, service B and service C. Earning on these services are given here. There are few common resources. So their requirement and availability is given in this table. The management also wants that the total number of services provided per day should be more than 25. So in the linear program, we will have the objective function to maximize the earning. So we need to have one equation for earning. Same way, we will have few constraints. The constraints from the resources side, that is the requirement of resources should be less than equal to availability. And same way, the services which we provide, their sum should be greater than equal to 25 or rather greater than equal to 26 because the question asked for should be more than 25. Let the number of services A per day that is equal to X1. Similarly for service B per day is X2 and service C per day X3. Earning we denote by P. So if you look at the data, uh, you can find this expression that revenue or earning per day will be equal to 200x1 plus 150x2 plus 250x3. You can see there 200, 150 and 250. These three data are earning on services A, service B and service C. These constant that is 25x1 plus 20x2 plus 40x3 less than or equal to 1500. You can note from the data that 25x1 plus 20x2 plus 40x3 gives you the requirement of resource 1. And uh, since the availability is 1500, the requirement should be less than or equal to availability. So you get this kind of constraint. If you look at resource 2, you will be getting the constant 35x1 plus 30x2 plus 25x3 less than or equal to 2000. Since we have another requirement that number of services provided per day should be more than 25. So we are also putting this constant that x1 plus x2 plus x3 greater than or equal to 26. This is also important that non-negativity constant should, uh, should be put. So x1 greater than or equal to 0, x2 greater than or equal to 0, x3 greater than or equal to 0. In linear program formulation, some of the common errors which uh, the students make. One is that they forget to write whether the objective is to maximize or minimize. The type of constant is also very important less than equal to, greater than equal to, or equal to. They cannot be interchanged. So you need to be careful if you are, instead of say less than equal to, if you write equal to or greater than equal to, that is a serious error. People also forget to write the non-negativity constraint. This again is a serious error and should be avoided. Now let us prepare the initial basic feasible solution table. For that, we first write the objective function. For this, uh, we bring the right hand side expressions to the left hand side. If you see in the previous slide, we had Maximize B equal to 200x1 plus 150x2 plus 250x3. We bring all these on left hand side. So you get P minus 200x1 
minus 150x2 minus 250x3. All the constants which you have, you should get equal to there. One simple rule is that if you have less than equal to type constant, you add something on the left hand side to make it equal to. If you have greater than equal to type constant, then you will have to subtract some variable from left hand side to make that equal to. So we do that here. You get 25x1 plus 20x2 plus 40x3 plus s1 equal to 1500. This is a slack variable which we are adding to make less than equal to equal to. So first four constraints are handled that way. You can note that s1, s2, s3, s4 are slack variables used in the first four constraints. The fifth constraint that was greater than equal to type and you can note here that uh, you are subtracting something like minus s5 to make that equal to. a1 is an artificial variable and that we have to introduce because we need to get basic variables from each of the constraints and you know that a basic variable is present in only one equation with plus one coefficients and uh, you are getting basic variables s1, s2, s3, s4 from the first four constraints but in the fifth constraint since you are not getting a basic variable you have to introduce one artificial variable. It may be important to recall at this stage that if the constants are less than equal to type slack variables which you use they qualify to be basic variable in the initial basic visual solution table but if the constants are greater than equal to type or equal to type you don't get a basic variable directly so you need to introduce artificial variable there you can solve this problem using two phase method or big m method we are actually doing this using big m method and there we need to introduce artificial variable and go ahead accordingly these data are now presented in tabular form for that you have to write all the variables which are used in this linear program so we write p x1 x2 x3 s1 s2 s3 s4 s5 and a1 these are the variables which have been used you know p is the earning per day x1 x2 x3 are the decision variables because you need to find out how much of service 1 or service a how much of service b and how much of service c should be done per day to maximize the earning s1 s2 s3 s4 are slack variables that you use to make less than equal to equal to s5 is surplus variable that you had subtracted from le left hand side to make greater than equal to equal to a1 is artificial variable that you are introducing to get a basic variable from that constant uh, which was of greater than equal to type on the left hand side that is the rows will be on the basis of the basic variables you have one objective function line that is the p line and uh, from all the five technical constants you are picking basic variables so from the first constant you get s1 as basic variable same way s2 s3 s4 and from the fifth uh, constant you get a1 as basic variable basic variable will have coefficient plus one in that equation and in other equations it will not be there so it will have coefficient zero then in the table all these data which you are seeing here they are picked from the rows like check this row s1 row you have coefficient 25 for x1 same way coefficient 20 of x2 coefficient 40 of x3 s1 is there s2 s3 s4 s5 and a1 are not there in that equation and right hand side value is 1500 
just compare it you can see here that s1 rho that is the first constant you have coefficients as 25 20 40 s1 has coefficient 1 s2 s3 s4 s5 and a1 are not there means their coefficients are 0 and right hand side value is 1500 similarly for other rows also we enter the data accordingly objective functional line also you can check that you have coefficient of p as 1 and this minus 200 minus 150 and minus 250 are coefficients of x1 x2 x3 in objective function and uh, s1 s2 s3 s4 s5 are not there a1 is also not there so the coefficient should be zero but we use big m here this is called big penalty because artificial variables are breaking the rule of mathematics and uh, if they continue to remain in the basis that is a painful thing in simplex iteration leaving a particular variable from the basis that depends on the data this technical data and uh, you can't do much with that but we can make this kind of arrangement that if a variable leaves the basis then it doesn't enter it again and if you want to do that you will have to keep very high penalty and that is what we are doing by this m for the artificial variable if artificial variable leaves the basis that is if a1 leaves the basis just because of this m that big value which you are putting it will never be able to enter the basis m is very very big bigger than any other any other number you can treat that as infinity and since you uh, have the system of uh, uh, selecting entering variable on the basis of uh, most negative coefficient in the objective function line if you are keeping a very high positive value here this will never be entering the basis if it leaves the basis once but as you know that uh, the basic variable should have coefficient 0 in the objective function line so the coefficient of a1 in the objective function line should not be m it should be 0 and uh, to bring this to 0 you require to do some elementary row operation and uh, that is what we have done here below uh, we are multiplying the a1 row by m and whatever we get that we are subtracting from the original p row so you can see m multiplied by 0 this m multiplied by 0 gives you 0 and uh, that if you subtract from 1 you get 1 that we are writing here same way here you have 1 if you multiply this by m you get m and you subtract that from this minus 200 so you get minus 200 minus m similarly minus 150 minus m all these values you get accordingly here you are multiplying minus 1 by m and then you are subtracting that from 0 so you get m here 1 multiplied by m will give you m and that subtracted from this m gives you 0 so now you see that the basic variables s1 s2 s3 s4 and a1 they have coefficients 0 0 0 0 and 0 in the objective function line and that way this is now initial basic feasible solution table feasible because all these right hand side values are non-negative and uh, you have all these basic variables which are meeting the requirements right hand side value for the objective function that is minus 26 m this indicates that you are 
in a feasible region but the earning right now is very very poor and as you can see that you have so many negative uh, coefficients in the objective function line you can pick uh, the one which is most negative that will be the entering variable and uh, you can accordingly find out the leaving variable when you do the iteration the earning value will be improving